everyone, welcome to our Crazy Life Scotland. My name's Fiona and in today's video I am going to be trying these resin moulds that I was very kindly gifted by BB Craft. Um, I'm going to be making them for the first time now. You may know if you watched my unboxing of the products from BB Craft, if you haven't I'll link it for you. I did put a poll up on my channel to say which mould would you like me to do first? There was this one, there was a snowman in the snowflake and there was a big um, sort of trinket tree with antlers. Now the trinket tree with antlers won and I was really glad because I can't wait to do that one. However, when I came to do it today, I've not got enough resin. <laughs> so I have gone with number two, which is this gorgeous little... Um, Merry Christmas decoration and it's got a snowman and a Christmas tree. So in case you're wondering why it's this and not the tree, that's the reason why. When I do get more resin and I get a chance, I will make that tree for you. But we just have to do what we can in the meantime. So this actually came with five identical moulds in the pack and I have played about with the first, with three of them, not actually filling them with resin, just trying to colour them in different ways to see what I think would work best. Because I thought if I'm making one, I'm as well making all five. So I've, I've had a bit of a play with them off camera. Now, every time I get a new mould, I have a debate with myself to colour or not to colour. That is the question. Because some moulds are better to add mica powders and things to the mould before you add the resin. And I've found that some, they're actually better to wait, pour the resin and then add different colours. So what I've decided to do with this one, because I've never made it before, is I'm going to leave this one completely clear and I'm just going to put the white resin in and then I'm going to colour the details later. Whereas this one, I'm going to try to colour beforehand. Uh, like I said, I've had a little play with them and I think I've figured out the best ways to do it. Excuse the dogs playing. So let's go. The first thing that I'm going to do is any bits of UV resin that I want to use. I found that UV resin worked really quite well on this mould. I've got the Diamond and Dust Glitter UV resins, okay, which are already coloured. So these are the ones I'm going to be using. So I'm going to do black for his hat. I'll do that first. So although they are nice small nozzles, they're not overly small. So what I do is I pop a bit in there and then I take a wee tool and I just very gently move it around to make sure it's in all of the places that I want. And the thing with UV resin, sometimes it does kind of get repelled at bits on the mould. It's just a case of persevering. And so again, less is more. Just start with a wee drop. You can always top it up if you need to. And those little bits um, I will clean up before I pour the actual resin. So see what I mean about it repelling a bit here? See if I can take some from over there. Let's see. Yep, that's looking not too bad. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cure it with the UV lamp pretty much every time I do something and that way it reduces the chance of it repelling. Right, so I just gave it one lot of 90 seconds. That will cure it enough that it doesn't um, repel. Right, so I'm going to take my black again and I'm just going to do like his eyes, his mouth and his buttons. In fact, do you know what? I'm not because I didn't do that with the UV resin on the other ones and I found a way that did work quite well. But what I am going to try to do is his gloves with the UV resin because the other method didn't work too great for that. So I'll pop a wee bit in there. Then just try to get it in all of the little grooves. Ooh, that was maybe a bit too much. Yeah. 
Now his other glove is actually up here at the top of his scarf. Because <laughs> at first I was making all that scarf and I'm like, that doesn't look right. And then I realised that's why. So I'll just borrow some from here since I've put a bit too much in. And the reason I found it hard to get the mica powder in here is because that space is actually quite small. I'll come back to you once that's had 90 seconds. How's his gloves? Oh, they're looking not too bad. Hmm. Yeah, it'll do. It'll do. Um, right, so I'm going to get the orange now. Now, obviously, you don't need to do this method. If you've not got ready-made coloured UV resin, you can make your own. Get his wee carrot nose done. And also... If you don't want to use UV resin, you don't have to. You can use micas, you can do it whatever way you want. Now I'm going to do that on his nose, but I'm also going to do a couple of the Christmas tree lights while I've got this one out. Oopsie. That little bit on the edge there, I can pick off once it's cured. It's easier than trying to, if you try to clean UV resin before it's cured, it just smears everywhere. Whereas if you wait until it's cured, you can just pick it off. Right, now I meant to say, you may notice that I'm not wearing gloves. Right, I'm just going to pull that bit off. I'm not wearing gloves because UV resin doesn't affect my hands. When I come to doing the epoxy, I will use gloves. Get out. Right, so now I am going to do the little dots in his scarf and I'm going to do that in champagne I think this one and I'm also going to do a couple of the lights with this as well my plan is once I've coloured it I'm going to put a nice white sparkly um, epoxy resin in the whole mould so I'm not going to colour the snowman he will take on that nice oops that nice sparkly white that's a bit of a mess there Fiona if you make a mess like that just take a little tool and oh hairs hairs that's what you get for having dogs Take a bit from that one, pop it there, take a bit from that one, pop it there, there we go, so I'm going to cure this now. Right, so I am now going to take my red, the surrounding of the scarf I'm not going to do in UV resin, I'll show you in a wee while what I'm going to do with that, but I'm going to take this red UV fill in these other lights now I'm going to use the UV resin for the writing but what I did find is like I said although it's a fine nozzle it's not super fine and sometimes it was like spreading a little bit so what I found easier was to put some on my mat and then just use my tool like you're painting to dip it in and then just go over the right hem like this. Now also it's sometimes easier with the UV resin to dot it on rather than like trying to brush it on like you would with paint. But that's just my experience. You can do it whatever way you want. I'll speed this up a bit for you now. Well, I'm all for 
Christmas, all the happy smiles. Right, a tiny little bit there. It's gonna be too big to get into. Let's see. It's easier to clean up once it's cured, but if it's stuck to a bit you want to keep and then cures, it would pull the whole lot off. So I'm just gonna pop this under here now. I'm gonna put it this way round. So in fact, you know what, I don't need that bit now anyway. I don't need that, so I'm just gonna cure that at the same time. And I won't throw it away. I'll keep it, I keep all my little scrappy bits of UV resin and epoxy resin because you just never know what you're going to use them for. Okay, so this now is cured. <laughs> right, pop that out of the way. Now, I am going to do the same with the Christmas but I'm going to do it in the champagne which I used for his scarf. And again, I'm going to pop some on my mat. Take my tool and Again, I will speed you up. Whatever we do, we will be all right. These holiday wonders will okay. Going to cure it now. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the little snowflakes in silver. And again, I will speed you up. In fact, what I'm going to do this time. I'm going to do it a little bit different. Rather than popping it on my mat, I'm going to put a dollop. Ah, that's black, not silver, Fiona. Oopsie. Blooper. I will keep you warm Which of course I will keep in because mistakes is how we learn. Okay, this one's a silver. <laughs> they do look similar. So I am going to pop a bit in the centre and then spread it out from there. So I will beat it up. The dream I knew this Christmas I only want That's all the areas that I'm doing in UV resin. So I'm now going to go on to doing the tree. I absolutely love this nail glitter powder. It's so sparkly, but it doesn't stick to moulds very well. So what I'm going to do, what I did with the other ones is, I took some of this jadeite green mica powder and popped it in my wee tub. I don't need a lot, so, and then I added a little bit of this nail powder to it, and it did seem to stick okay to the mould, so let's try it. I'm just going to take a little brush, give it a bit of a mix. So I'm just going to brush this on. Now I'm going to be careful, it doesn't matter so much around the lights because the UV resin's on there, so that is the colour that you're going to see when it's uh, demolded, but I don't want it to get into the scarf or where the snowman's going to be. And it's hard to see where the, the tree ends and the snowman starts, so we'll just kind of make it up. We don't want too much on there because we don't want it all to float into the white. I'm going to turn it upside down. Oops, give it a tap it up. And I think that is fine. Maybe need another wee bit down there. I might have lost my bit of UV resin from there. 
we added the tap in. Make sure we're in all the wee edges. Although if we're not, it'll just look like the white, it'll just look like snow. Now what, I'm going to add another bit of UV resin on there because that'll annoy me. Give it another tap. Oh look there, it's there. <laughs> That's the bit of UV resin. So I think that was a champagne one. I'm going to put another bit of champagne on there and pop it under the light. In fact, do you know what? What am I doing? That's not going to work, Fiona, because the green's under there first. That's what's going to be seen. <sighs> Silly me! You know, I'm going to cure it and then it'll probably take the green off with it when I pick it off. Right, so hopefully now... Oh, which one was it again? Was it that one? I'm going to very carefully... Pick it off and it took the green off with it. Yay! So now I can redo it and pop it back in. Right, now I am going to do the scarf, but I don't want the powder, the mica powder to go everywhere. So what I'm going to do is a little trick that I have seen other people doing. Um, I think the most recent person that I saw doing it was Marcy from... Marcy's Artsy Fartsy Creations, and that is to add a little bit of um, alcohol to it so that it's more like a paint, and then the alcohol evaporates as it dries. Whoops, that was maybe a bit too much. Don't need that much. Right, let's see how we go with this. So I've got my isopropyl alcohol in here, just going to give it, you don't want to add too much. And I'm going to use one of these little micro brushes. I know a lot of people don't like using them because they feel like they uh, scratch their mould. I've never found that, I just do it very, very lightly. I don't know, I might need to use a brush, but we'll see. And again, it doesn't matter so much if it goes over the the UV resin. I think I've got too much alcohol in there. Add some more powder. My phone stand is in a very awkward place today, so I feel like I'm doing everything sort of the wrong way around. Right, let's try this. I think it's a micro brush that says you. This is what I used on the other ones. Yeah, I think I'm going to need some more powder in there. Let's see. Right, so while that is curing, I am going to make up some of the black to use for his buttons and facial features. So I'm just going to take, this is the same tub that I used for the black in the other ones earlier. I am just going to take a bit of this. It's a silvery black. I shouldn't need too much because once, as you can see, the alcohol has dried and left just plain mica powder there. So just a little bit. Give it a stir. I might need to add more powder, we'll see. Right, so his little eyes. I'm just going to dot some of that on. Again, if I did it with just plain dry mica, it would go everywhere because of the static. So this is a great trick. I don't know who first came up with it, 
but I have seen quite a few people doing it. And then this little mouth, and again the dabbing motion. Rather than the painting motion. And again, if it does repel it, just sort of let it dry and then do another coat. And then his buttons. You can use whatever you want to put it on with. I just find that this little dotty tool is quite handy. Right, and I think that is him. I'm going to give the alcohol a chance to evaporate while I am mixing my resin and I'll come back to you once that's mixed and ready to add the colour into it. Right, voice over now because I've got my PPE on. I have mixed up my resin, about 100 mils in total. I did 50 of A and 50 in B. I'm just going to add some of this white mica powder to it. I'm not really measuring, I put about a spoon in at first. Then give it a good mix round just to make sure it's all incorporated and see whether or not I need any more. Now just again be careful when you're stirring it so that you're not introducing too many bubbles. Now it is completely mixed in and I'm going to add some of this glitter. This is quite chunky, pearlescent glitter and I just used what I had left. Then I'm adding a similar colour of glitter but it's a lot finer. So I just tip some of that in again, I don't measure it, I just tip it in. The more glitter the better. <laughs> and then again carefully mix that all together. And when you're mixing remember to scrape the sides and the bottoms but don't keep lifting your stirrer out of the resin and putting it back in because that does introduce more bubbles. We want to keep it as bubble free as possible. I decide more glitter is needed, of course I do. <laughs> So I just add some more and mix it again. Right, I'm happy with this and I'm going to start pouring. Now, I should have been sensible here. I had mixed the 100 mils and this is the only container that I've got that's any bigger than 100 mils. And it's huge and I think I've not got a smaller one. But I did because now that it's mixed, I could have put it into a smaller container. I just didn't think. <laughs> So here I am trying to use this massive big jug to pour the resin in and I am pouring it in the one which we have coloured first of all but I've got the other one there that's been left blank to, uh, to fill in as well. Now I really didn't feel comfortable doing this as you can probably tell but I popped some in and then thought right I'll leave that to self level while I put some more in. Uh, sorry, while I put some into the other one. And as you can see, I'm not very good using this big jug. My brain does kick in in a, a little while, but um, yeah, first of all, I'm like, oh, this is a nightmare. And can I just take a minute to talk about these gloves? They're brilliant. They actually fit me, and I've got no idea where they came from. I've only got one pair, so they must have came with one of the resin kits or something that I bought. But they're brilliant. So if anybody knows where I can get gloves like this, that sort of, like, small, please let me know. Anyway, I'm just taking my little um, steady stool, steady stool, steady tool here to make sure that all the resin is in all of the gaps up to all of the edges. I don't want to fill it too much, but because I've not done it before, I'm not really sure exactly how much to pour in. So I'm trying to borrow some from other bits of the mould so that I'm not overfilling at any point. I 
And again, for these small details, I should be using like a sort of pokey tool type thing, silicon tool, rather than that big sturdy stick, but hey ho. <laughs> I don't know where my brain was this day. I had too much to do and I was too stressed and I just wasn't thinking properly. Anyway, I'm adding a little bit more to this uh, mould which hasn't got the colour in it until I think, yep, that's pretty much as full as I want it to go. Now my brain kicks into gear and I decide to pour some from the big jug into the small jug. Obviously I didn't want to do this before mixing it because I wanted it all to be the same colour. But once it's mixed you on it, it doesn't matter what you pour it from. <laughs> Lesson learned. <laughs> so this should be much easier now. I've poured it from the big jug into the smaller one and I am going to add some more to the mould that we coloured earlier. Look how much easier that is. <laughs> so much easier to control. Just having a quick look here to see if there's any gaps that need filling. Again, why am I using this tool and not like a micro brush or a dotty tool? I don't know. <laughs> but it does the job anyway. It would just be a lot easier to go into the edges with a little dotty tool. But again, sorry about the dogs, when you have coloured your mould, you don't want to be scraping around too much in there because you don't want the mica to mix with your resin. So I'm just giving it a little tap to make sure it's in all the edges and that there's no bubbles or anything. And I do the same with this one too. Check it's in all the edges, give it a bit of a tap and make sure I'm happy with it. Yeah. So now that's those two done, I'm going to carry on and fill the other three moulds that I had coloured off camera. Now the original ones have had time to settle, I just have a little look, see if there's any bubbles, see if it needs topped up anywhere, and yeah it does, it needs a little bit extra, just in the top here. I'm happy with that now, so I've just popped that aside to cure, and I'm now just going to go into the other ones and make sure that they're all topped up, that they've not got any bubbles or anything like that as well. And then I do take a couple of spare moulds just to use up the last of the resin. But that is it for now, and I will come back to you once they're cured and it's time to demold, unmold, whatever you like to say. <laughs> Good morning, I'm back. Now for my favourite part, unmoulding. It's been not quite 24 hours, but it definitely seems nice and cured. It'll be a bit bendy, but we can work with that. So the first one that I'm going to unmould is the plain white one. The one that we didn't do any colour yet is bendy. We didn't do any colour to this one at all. Just the white and the, and the glitter and the mica. What I'm going to do, because it is so bendy, is I'm going to turn it over, but I won't peek. I always find if it's soft, it's easier to peel the mould away from the resin rather than the other way around. So, there we go. Let's have a look. Oh, it's cute. You can see the details. So it should be easy enough to colour, but I am going to leave it for a few hours um, to cure properly before I colour it. And I'll show you how I do that. Leave it over pour there. I'll sort that in a second. Sorry if you can hear the brushing, the floor's getting swept. Right, this is the one that we coloured on camera. So we coloured the mould with UV resin and mica and some of the mica we sprayed alcohol on so that it um, didn't go everywhere. Let's see. Out we come. Aha, look! 
he has worked out so cute. I like that. What a brilliant mould. It's All the detail is there. And I've still got my lights in the tree. Yay, I like that. We've got a little bit of mica spread up to his head, but not much. Yay. So again, I'm going to leave that lying flat for a good sort of 24 hours to make sure that it's properly um, cured. Now these ones are ones that I had coloured off camera, but as well just looking at them to see. Now I would say from the amount that I mixed about 100 mils, I managed to pour the five of them and there was some left that I poured some angel wings and a Santa head, although he's not coloured because the resin was starting to cure by that point, and just a few little snowflakes. So I would say these moulds take maybe between 10 and 15 mils, no, yeah, 10 and 15 mils of resin, 15 probably each. I see, yeah, that one's not quite as neat round there but we can touch that up and it was a light blue mica powder that I used for the snowflakes in that one yay you'll notice that I did some different colours yeah that's nice as well again it was a blue mica and I had mixed it with the alcohol to get it to sit nice and this is mica rather than UV resin another good one and you can see his hands aren't quite as good because I used the black mica whereas the one that we did on camera his hands have actually turned out not bad considering the tight space and our final one and that one I really like that mould Again, I've not done a great job with this scarf and there are some outlines there that we can go over with paint as well and a touch of overpour but I can get that. Right, so I'll come back to you when these are cured properly and we can add the colour to this little guy. Right, it is a good few days later now I am going to attempt to colour this. It's properly cured and it's looking good, it just needs all the little details filled in. Apologies if you can hear noise outside, my dad has got his new toy, his leaf blower out. <laughs> right, I'm going to try to use pen for the majority of it. Um, either paint pen or the metallic pens that I've got. And we'll see how that goes. I'm not sure how it'll work, we'll give it a try. I'll get a, an idea when I start trying to do the tree yeah it's looking quite nice it will need to dry obviously and what I'll probably do is where the little holes are for the lights I might put little diamond drills diamond painting drills in there get an idea where the tree should go yeah that's looking not bad at all I'm gonna take this up there I think yeah that looks quite good I wasn't sure if they would work but it's turned out nice I'll try this twin metallic marker for the trunk of the tree oh it's all bleeding in look oh oh my goodness that maybe wasn't a good idea Hmm, let me try and take that bit off. I'm maybe going to have to let it dry before I do that. There we go. Or it was maybe just that type of marker because it was a different type. Finish the green again. Right, I'll leave the trunk just now. I'll let that dry a bit. Now, I've, have I got a decent black pen? I'm not sure if I have. I might just try a dark silver for his hat and gloves.
looks okay. Well, I do his little gloves. Christmas, all the happy smiles and the wishes. No, is it going to work in his mouth? There we go, it's gone in his mouth, okay, I've just wiped the excess off. I've not got all my normal bits to hand because my room's all being done up, so I'm just making do with what I've got. Right, I think I'm going to try this red pen for the Merry Christmas, or the Merry. I'm not sure if it'll get in the hole or not. I'm just going to lean quite hard and then I can wipe the excess off. So everything that I do on the top should just come off. But the bits that are in the, the little grooves should stay like that. Oopsie. looking fine and I might do the Christmas in green and I'm going to do his scarf in the red it's not going to be perfect because I've not got everything at hand but I just wanted to show you the difference between colouring before and colouring after, so you get the idea. The black buttons, I'll try this black pen, I'm not sure how well it works, but we'll see if it gets in the little holes. I just need to be very careful if I'm wiping any excess off that I don't wipe off the scar. I don't know where all my little um, cotton buds and micro brushes are that I would normally use for this. That's fine. That's okay. I might actually try that black on his hat as well. It might show up better. This pen is working better. I'm not sure it wasn't working. The snow is falling down. I've been longing for this a bit better. Um, will I try and do his eyes? Will I attempt it? Yes, it's a time of happiness, a time of joy, but now this year is crazy. I'll try and do his wee carrot nose as well. And if I have to, I can go in with the the diamond gels, to be honest, I'm not sure where they all are. My room is so upside down at the moment, we're getting work done on the whole house. And my craft room was taken over for a week while the workers were storing down. Right. right, the Christmas, will I do that in a green? Do that in a different green, maybe? Too bad at all. Right, I'm going to try to get a silver for the little snowflakes. Let's try the silver. These are a lot juicier, so the um, the ink flows straight out down into the little grooves rather than actually having to force the nib down. If you know what I mean. Probably not. I'm probably not describing it very well. Right, let's try wiping that now. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Apologies, I completely dropped you. What do you think? Right, now, I think all that's left, I might 
is the little light in the tree. Am I going to try to do UV resin with that? I might actually try just a little dollop of UV resin because I'm not sure where all my diamond painting drills are, but they would work fine as well. I'm going to use the same coloured UV resin that I used in the actual mould of the other one. And I wonder if I'll be able to get it directly in the little hole. That one kind of disappeared, didn't it? little blue one, and a little red one. Once I've cured them there might be room to put a wee bit more in. Try and put more in there. It doesn't matter that they're a little bit bigger than the actual hole. A little bit of gold. Look at me shaking. Oops, I completely missed it there. It would probably have been easier. Right, do you know what? Can you see what's happening there? It's actually reacting with the green pen, I think. So, I'm going to try and clean that up. I'll be back in a second. I'm just going to use my kitchen roll. not got any little dotty tools to just dot it in to hand. Look at that, the, the tree's actually been stained green. I quite like it like that actually. That's not bad. Right, now that most of the green paint's off, I'm going to try the little dots again. Maybe if I go in with the UV first and then do the paint, it will work out better. Now I'm going to cure these quickly and see if that helps. Right. I'm just going to leave the little spots in his scarf, I think. White. I'm going to put a touch more of the blue in this one and I don't like this one I'm going to try to put some more gold in there that's nice right hmm, not too bad I think I'm going to top up the green now Let's compare side by side. This is the one that I've just done. So I just poured the white glitter. Look at that glittery resin, I love it. I just poured the white resin straight into the mold without doing anything to it first with this one. And this is the one that we coloured on camera before pouring it. And I have to say, I think I've definitely prepare this one and it was a lot quicker as well. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below which one do you prefer. Um, yeah, because the colours are really, they've not came out very clear at all on this one so I might just go over them with the pen. But at the moment all that's left to do is put a string on them that they go through the holes. that together. I know it's a cheats way but I can't do bows. I'm rubbish at bows so <laughs> the cheats way is fine by me. Put this one in here. Put that together. 
and there we go, what do we think? Let me know what is your preferred method. Do you like to colour first and then pour or do you like to pour and then colour? Or do you prefer to do completely different colours of resin for each bit? Let me know in the comments below. But I, either way, I think it's a very cute mould. The whole point of doing this was to see how the BB craft mould worked and I love it. I really do like it. All the details have came out so well and yeah, I am very, very happy with that. So, I hope you've enjoyed this. If so, please hit the thumbs up button. Don't forget to talk to me in the comments below. I would love it if you would subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks again to BB Craft for sending this mould and all the other products to me again. The link to this mould and my discount code will be in the description of this video and I will link the unboxing video for you if you've not seen it. So that's everything for now. I will see you in our next one.